Hello there! My name's Hattie, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and in this video, I'm going to be making some spooky terrain that's easy, cheap, and fun to make. And that's not all! Today, I'm being joined by a very special guest, my brother Josh. Josh has been into Warhammer basically forever, he in fact sparked my initial interest in the hobby, and he makes a lot of terrain himself, so I thought he'd be the perfect person to help me with this. And yes, I know we have the same face. Our parents really just said copy-paste when it came to me. Anyway, we're going to make some super cool terrain in this video. We'll be making some gravestones, a spooky wonky crypt, a broken rusty fence, and some twisty trees. Perfect for your scary Halloween minis, or just to set the right vibe for your games during spooky season. I'm not only going to show you how to build all of these cool terrain pieces, but also how to paint them in really simple steps too, using a very limited colour palette to give it that proper grim, spooky vibe. We'll start with the gravestones. There are loads of ways to make gravestones, but we're going to show you two different ways here. The easiest way to make them is to use wooden tongue depressors. You can get them from Amazon or a pharmacy or craft shop. They're really cheap and you usually get loads in a pack. Perfect. Simply measure how long you want it, leave a little allowance for the base, score across and snap it. Couldn't be easier. For the base, we're going to cut out a rough circle of foam board. This stuff is in every craft shop. It's cheap and easy to cut with a regular hobby knife. To make it look a bit more natural, we bevel the edges by putting our knife at roughly a 45 degree angle and cutting around the base. Then, to stabilise the gravestones, we're going to cut a small line about halfway through the foam board, exactly where we want the gravestones. Don't go all the way through, and then hot glue them in so they don't wobble around. Hot glue is perfect to use on foam board because it won't melt the foam, unlike things like super glue. For all the bases, we want them to look like natural earth with a bit of texture to them, so we're going to cover them using this ready-made filler mixed with a little bit of water to make it a bit smoother. You can usually get this from any DIY shop. This will also add some weight to the bases so they don't shift around on the table when you're using them in your games. And you can use one of those tongue depressors to spread it around like you're icing a cake. This filler will also need a good amount of time to dry, so make sure to leave plenty of time in your project for it. We left all these bases overnight and they were nice and solid by the morning. Now for the slightly more difficult gravestones. For this you can use any air dry clay or a two-part epoxy like Milliput. We're going to use Das Clay because it's really good for this sort of thing and you get a lot of it for your money. Flatten down a small amount of clay to about the thickness of a pound coin if you're from the UK, or about three millimetres or about an eighth of an inch if you're from Freedom Eagle land. <coughs> then, using your hobby knife, cut out the shape you want for your gravestone. The brief for this project that I gave Josh was Tim Burton goes Warhammer, so we went for this slightly wonky shape for this one. If you want to use your gravestones for cover for your minis during a game, then it would be a good idea to measure your gravestone shape to be slightly bigger and wider than the biggest model that would be using it. Well, within reason, of course. This next step is totally optional, but it can add a lot of character to your gravestones. We're going to add some designs to the front of our gravestones as if there were inscriptions on the stone. This doesn't have to be actual letters, it can just be lines that kind of look like letters or Roman numerals, like what Josh is doing here. Josh then added some really cool little crack detailing to make it look like this gravestone is old and neglected. Now, we need to make sure the gravestones can stand up before they dry. We cut up some paper clips, bend them at a right angle, and gently push them inside the bottom of the gravestone. It's worth putting in at least three of these to every gravestone so they stand up. Make sure to leave plenty of time for your clay to dry. These took around 24 hours to be fully set. While that one dries, here's some we made earlier. You can make loads of cool designs and take inspiration from films like we did to give your terrain a bit of extra personality. I particularly love this one with the skull design and this double one. Have some fun with your designs and it'll make your terrain really unique. Like the other base, we're going to cut it out of foam board and cover it in filler. It's a good idea to test the spacing on your base with some minis before you glue everything down. 
Again, we're just going to hot glue these gravestones down for maximum hold and no foam melting. Now we're going to make a crypt. It's a surprisingly versatile choice of building because they can really vary in size and design. We trialled a few different shapes and designs and I took inspiration from the famous Crooked House in Lavenham in the UK. We're going to sketch our design onto foam board for this again because it's so easy to work with. But if you want to go to the next level you can use XPS foam which will allow you to add texture to the outside of your building. Josh sketched on the shape for the front side of the building using a mini for rough scale cut it out and then trace the back side from that piece to make it match. Then we measured the sides of the building to make the walls. With hindsight, we realised it would have been easier to make the walls out of just one piece of foam for each side and fold it, but instead we cut them out individually. We can hide the joins later. Remember that bevelling technique from earlier? We're going to do that now along the edges where the walls will meet to make them fit together. And then for stability, much like you would when building flat pack furniture, we're going to make some tiny little pegs from paper clips that we cut down and then slide them into the foam where the sides will meet so that the walls should hold together and stay upright when you glue them. We used PVA to stick the walls together but hot glue would have been just as effective but just make sure the glue doesn't spill out onto the outside of the walls. Then we're going to make some more pegs to hold the walls to the front and back of the crypt and repeat the process. Now it's assembled, we're going to make it look like it's made out of bricks by scoring a brick texture onto all the walls using a mechanical pencil with no lead. Or you could use something like a cocktail stick too. For a door, you could leave the wall intact and simply score on the shape of a door and paint it on later. Or you could cut out an open door shape so your minis can hide inside. But we decided to use a tongue depressor. We're going to draw around the tongue depressor cut the shape out of the front wall and then use that same tongue depressor as the door by simply sliding up the middle of the foam board. And we're also going to add some little scoring lines up the door to make it look more like wood. Now to hide those pesky wall joins. We're going to stick on a couple of coffee stirrers, cut down to size with hot glue to hide any unsightly edges and to add some character like it's an old Victorian building. Now let's make a roof. I want this roof to look old and decrepit. Decrepit? De decrepit? Decrepit. Decrepit. So I'm going to make some wonky shingles for it. I'm going to cut out some strips of regular craft card that are the same length as the roof and a couple of centimetres tall and then cut upwards into them, leaving a little bit at the top to go under the next layer. But I'm not going to cut these uniformly and I'm going to cut a bit off the ends of some of the shingles for a bit of variation. Then just keep making rows of wonky shingles until you can stack them all the way up your roof and then we're going to stick them on with some PVA glue. When you stick them to the roof, make sure you leave some of the previous row sticking out. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. In fact, the weirder it looks, the better. Then when you get to the top, cut a strip of card exactly the same length as all the other ones and just fold it lengthways down the middle and stick it on top. And it's done. Make a base in exactly the same way as the others and then it's time to make a spooky fence. We workshopped a few designs again and decided to go for this fally down wonky fence because I think it will fit the vibe of the rest of the pieces we're making. You could use the same foam board we've been using for the brick fence posts, but we're actually going to use this XPS foam. You can get this from most DIY shops or online. We're going to cut off just a tiny chip sized portion of this foam to use with our hobby knife and then cut that chip in half so it's not too tall. And then we're going to add some texture to the foam. To do so, we're going to make a little sausage out of tin foil and roll it all over the sides of the fence posts. You'll see that this will create a lovely stony texture. This is one of my favorite tricks because it's so simple but so effective. And to make it look like bricks, we're going to add some scoring marks around the posts. I managed to find these really awesome cocktail sticks on Amazon link in the description if you want some for yourself, that I think are meant to be for holding food together or to put fruit in your cocktails. But because they have these really cool little arrowheads on them, they'll be perfect for making a spooky wrought iron fence. We're going to cut them to various lengths to make it look all old and fally over. But if you want a uniform fence, you could cut them all to the same length. 
Now we've got a paper clip that we've unfurled to attach all the wires together and we're going to cut some tiny little notches in the cocktail stick so the paper clip will be nicely held in place once we add the super glue. Yay, teamwork! Then we're going to stick the post down with hot glue, poke the paper clip end into the post to hold them together and hot glue the bottoms of the cocktail sticks down too. Be careful not to mix wet super glue with hot glue though. It can create really harmful fumes that you definitely don't want to be around. Wait until your super glue is totally dry before hot gluing anything. Then we bent the last piece of fence around to look like it had been broken off and stuck it down. Add the filler to the base, same as the others, and boom, fence is done. Now we're going to make a tree. This was the only thing I was confident I could make by myself because I'd actually done it before almost the same way for a music video many moons ago. Like the graveyards, I'm going to show you two ways to make a tree. One is easier and one is a little bit more tricky. For the easiest one, we're going to take some floral wire. I have different thicknesses here because I use it to make armatures for stop motion animation too, but you can just use one. Cut your wire into lengths of about 13 to 15 inches or longer if you want a taller tree. Regular hobby clippers are fine for this. It doesn't matter if they're not all exactly the same length because trees' branches aren't all the same length. I used five pieces of wire here, but you can use more or fewer depending on how big you want your tree to be. Then I'm going to bend all the pieces in half and leave a little loop of wire at the bottom of the tree that we'll cut and use as roots later. And then we'll twist, twist, twist the wires going upwards. I took a spare piece of wire to wrap around the base on the trunk just to hold them together, but you don't necessarily need to do this. Then when you decide you want your first branch, pull out a couple of wires and then carry on up the tree with the rest of the wires until you reach the last couple of wires right at the top. Then with the branches, we're going to twist the wires together, fork them out at the end and then trim them to the length that you want. Then back at that loop at the bottom, we're going to take our clippers and cut them all roughly in the middle and then do the same twisting technique that we use for the branches to create roots, only they'll be shorter this time. Next, we want to give this tree a bit of a barky texture, so we're going to wrap all this wire in masking tape. Cut your pieces into little thin strips like this and then wrap them around the trunk and the branches. Then I did a bit of a silly and I jumped forward a couple of steps by covering the masking tape in black acrylic mixed with PVA. Skip the step for now and we'll come back to it in a minute. The real next step is to mix together some thin PVA with sand and then coat that all over the tree. This will give it a really cool knobbly old look. While that's drying, we'll make the other tree. Start with about six to eight wire pieces, just like before. And then we're going to use a bit of kitchen foil. Make a little sausage with your foil and bend it to the rough shape you want your tree to follow. I'm going for a twisty tree because I want this one to look like the tree from Sleepy Hollow. Then we're essentially going to do the same thing for this tree. Bend your wire in half, leave a little room for the roots at the bottom and then start wrapping your wires around your foil sausage. The wire that I used for this was quite thick so it was a bit of a wrestle to get them in shape. Pull out branches exactly the same as the other tree and continue upwards. Now, I want this tree to look like it's dead and doesn't have a big plume of branches at the top. So I'm going to leave the last pieces of wire sticking straight out instead of twisting them into branches. Then cut and twist the roots together at the bottom and trim your branches and it should look like a tree. Then we're going to use some more of that dust clay to give it a barky skin. You could just take a whole chunk of das and try and spread it straight onto the tree, but it might slip off and fall and be a bit of a nightmare to work with. So what we're going to do is make these thin clay snakes and then wrap them around the tree so we can make sure it actually covers the whole tree. To smooth out the snakes and blend them together, I'm going to dip my fingers in a little bit of water and then blend, blend, blend. Then carry on to the top of the tree only leaving the ends of the branches empty because we'll do something different to those. It is a bit fiddly to do this, but that's why this is a slightly more difficult tree. Then we're going to add the texture to the tree. I'm going to use these silicon modeling tools and a small palette knife to create some barky lines down the tree, but you could use a cocktail stick just as easily. You'll want to do this while the clay is still malleable, so don't wait too long after it goes on the tree. Again, it doesn't need to be neat, 
This is a spooky old twisty dead tree after all. I'm also going to make a fun little owl hole on this tree by mashing a little circle into it and then moulding the bark around it, which will give these bark lines something to go around and add a bit of visual interest. Carry on making your lines until the tree looks like this. If you didn't wear gloves, like me, whoopsie, go and wash your hands. You'll need to leave this tree to dry for about 24 hours, but after that, we're going to use that same PVA and sand mix we used on the other tree and coat the branches in it to give them a bit of texture. It might look a bit like porridge when it goes on, but you just have to trust the process. Then, for the bases, make something totally different. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Make the bases exactly the same as the others. Then we're going to go back and gather all of our pieces and cover all the bases in a thin layer of PVA and then sprinkle sand all over them to give them a real earthy texture. Leave them to dry and once they have we're going to do this totally optional step and add some black paint mixed with thin PVA and coat everything in it. This will just seal down any loose sand and make sure all the different materials across the pieces can be painted over like normal. As I said, this isn't necessary to do all over the bases and everything, but do make sure that if you're going to use a spray can to prime these pieces, that you cover all the foam in paint and or PVA first, because foam reacts really badly with the accelerant in primer cans and it will melt. And at this point, Josh had to go home. Ah, good morning. Shall we do some painting? Yes, good. I agree. Since we've covered everything in black acrylic and PVA mix, we don't actually need to prime. But if you skip that step, then you can undercoat your pieces with a black spray can. Although double check that all of your foam is covered beforehand because you don't want it to melt. Or you could use regular black acrylic through an airbrush. I'm going to use the airbrush quite a lot for these pieces because it's a really useful tool for quick and even coverage, but you obviously don't have to use it. You can do almost everything with a brush. It just takes a little more time. We got this airbrush really cheap on Amazon and it's linked in the video description if you want to give it a try. I'm going to start by coating all the bases in TT Combat's trench mud. Of course, very thin, so it'll go through the airbrush. I'm also going to spray this all over both of the trees so they'll be quicker to paint later. After a couple of coats, we're going to move on to TT Combat's mummified khaki and dry brush it all over all of the bases. I'm going to use this nice big soft dry brush from Army Painter because I like the soft bristles, but you could use a much bigger brush if you have one. Don't worry too much about being neat because we'll paint all the other parts later. Next, we'll start painting all the stone pieces. I'm going to take Citadel's Mechanicus Standard Grey and the same big round brush and I'm going to stipple it all over the walls of the crypt building, all of the gravestones and the stone pillars of the fence. Then, because I want this to be a moody, moonlit graveyard, I'm going to use Citadel's Fenrisian Grey, thin it down to almost a wash consistency and then stipple it all over the grey parts but leaving a little bit of that Mechanica standard grey showing so it'll start to look like a moonlit highlight. Once that's dry, do another layer exactly the same to add some more texture. Then to add some shading to the stone, we're going to thin some of Citadel's Black Legion contrast paint with Lamian Medium and run it into the recesses of the stone and also between the shingles on the roof. This will start to bring out all the detailing and give them some really good contrast. Then to highlight, we'll mix Citadel's Blue Horror with AK White about 50-50 and then stipple a thin highlight across the top of all of your stone bits. This will take some time. Just take it nice and carefully and everything will start to look amazing. I'm also going to do a little bit down the edges of the scoring marks we made in the door earlier to bring out that texture. I'm going to do a gentle dry brush on the roof with Citadel's Administratum Grey and this huge flat brush and paint a small dot highlight on the top of the fence spikes and a very thin stipple highlight across the top parts of the fence wire. To add a bit of a different colour to the roof and to mute those highlights down just a little bit, I'm going to give it a purple wash with TT Combat's purple wash. Now onto the trees. Since we already airbrushed them brown, this will be easy. We're going to give them a quick dry brush with Citadel's Bane Blade Brown 
and then wash them with splodges of this mix of washes. If you want this to be even easier, just use your favourite brown wash. Then after that, to make them look different from the bases, we're going to dry brush with a warm sandy brown, Citadel Zandri Dust, on the top edges of the branches and the trunk to highlight. For a final stark moonlit highlight, we're going to mix pale sand and AK white and dry brush it lightly onto the very highest edges. And that's the trees done. Easy peasy. Now for those bases. Again, I'm going to add some splodges of some different warm coloured washes in patches across all of the bases. For this, I'm using this selection from TT Combat. Then I'm going to add a shadow to the bases and the backsides of all these pieces. You don't need to do this if you don't want to, but I think it really adds to the moonlit effect. For this, I'm using Citadel's Leviathan Purple Contrast Paint, really thinned down with Lamian Medium. You could use an airbrush for all of this step, but I chose to put it on the base with a brush and then airbrush it onto the backsides of all the pieces. Then I'm going to pop on some tufts and things to the bases and around the edges of the terrain. I'm using the selection of pretty drab tufts but with different colours to make them more interesting. These cute little ones with purple flowers and whatever this stuff is that Guy has that looks like little dead plants. I've got these teeny little tweezers to help me apply them here and I'm going to add a little dot of super glue to help them stick and then go around all the bases adding them where I want. Next is my absolute favourite step. I'm going to add these teeny little birch tree seeds onto the bases that look like little leaves. I found some of these outside my old flat a few years ago and I used them on my pumpkin great unclean one and I thought I was a total genius before I realised they were a well-known miniature basing supply. I'm going to do the same thing with these, applying them with a little dot of super glue and using the tweezers to help me stick them down and not to my fingers. Oh, I love these so much. They really give your pieces those pumpkin spice vibes that I love. I'm also going to plop a couple on the branches like they've fallen from the trees and you could also use them to cover any little gaps on your bases. Then for a few final touches, I'm going to use a little bit of dirty down rust on the fence to make it look like old iron and a bit of their moss paint too to the trees, the crypt roof and some patches on the bases. Then just an optional quick spray of thinned matte varnish and your spooky graveyard terrain is all done. I love how these turned out. I think we totally hit the brief. I especially love the twisty tree, the highlights on that stone, and these fun shaped gravestones we made. I feel like it's a perfect mix of Halloween-y Tim Burton-esque vibes and Warhammer. Now all my spooky minis have their own themed terrain to play on. Just a couple of quick reminders for you, we're running a spooky and orc themed painting competition called Sporktober. If you don't already know what it's about, head to Guy's or my Instagram to read the details and enter your minis for cool retro prizes. Also, we have merch! I have these awesome prints of my last Halloween themed Warhammer, my great unclean boogie, for sale. But hurry, there are less than 20 left and when they're gone, they're gone. And Guy has these awesome prints of his Warlord Titan and his post Vitruvian Space Marine prints for sale. Check them all out at midwinterminis.com. Also, also, the main reason we can continue to make cool videos is because of our awesome patrons over on Patreon. For a small donation starting at $2 a month, you can support our channel and help us carry on making cool Warhammy things for your entertainment. Head over to patreon.com slash midwinterminis to join us today. We also give a shout out to our latest signups, so please put your hands together and welcome Dahi, Kotor, Kevin, Nicholas Wainwright, Perfluagi, Fallout Toon Link, Midblue, Tom Finch, Rinpix, Tony Howell, Sirius, Clarence Carter, CBM, Johannes S, Yanis, and Condor McClunky. Thanks again to my wonderful brother Josh for teaching me how to make all of these things, and thanks to all of you for watching! Catch you next time, and don't forget to stay spooky! 
Bye-bye.